Welcome back, adventurers. Today, we embark on a special journey into the past, exploring the moments that carved the destinies of the Banded Broken. Each tale in this series offers a glimpse into the critical decisions and events that defined our heroes. Ortega and Tatiana are spending an evening together in Ancarel when they start talking and reminiscing about their time together. And Ortega, you start talking about how you're happy that Tatiana is very much different than the last interest that you had, if you could even call it that. And Tatiana, you ask, how come you don't talk about the Fae? How come you don't want to go back? Why is it that you talk so negatively about this person? And Ortega, your mind starts to slowly drift to the Feywild as you explain where you first met Nerebi. She was enchanting, a being of power and allure, and you would have done anything for her. And you did, sacrificing everything for her love, blinded by her spell. And then you look around at the destruction, and you wonder if that love was real or just another one of her manipulations. You look out now at your ancient home, Elder Haven. It lies in ruins now because of your choices, or rather, the choices under Nerubi's sway. A town that once embraced you now stands broken and empty, silent reminder of what you've lost. As you gaze at the blackened elder tree, you murmur, Elder Haven, and you see it too. The cracked cobblestones and the burnt out cottages, the darkened river, the beauty of the village is now a ghost, lingering only in your memory. This tale takes us to the ruins of Elderhaven, where Ortega, a man broken by love and betrayal, is hunted by the Feyborn he once loved. Exiled for his dark deeds and pursued relentlessly, Ortega now faces a desperate escape from the Feywild with his past closing in on him. I'm your host and Dungeon Master Kyle, and today we'll witness Ortega's story through the eyes of those he left behind, the allies who see his desperation and the choices that sealed his fate. Together, we'll uncover a tale of enchantment, vengeance, and a dangerous race for his freedom. As you all wake up in your respective homes, you look around, trying to grasp exactly what just happened. You saw a red blur in a crazed barbaric rage burn down your entire town. Somehow, out of all of your homes, you were the only ones that seemed to have made it out. As you step out into Elder Haven, the first thing that you notice is the silence. A heavy, unsettling quiet that hangs over the village like a shroud. The cobblestone streets, once lively with the sound of laughter and footsteps, now cracked and overgrown with weeds. The scent of lavender still lingers faintly in the air. It's a haunting reminder of the village's former glory. The river that once flowed crystal clear, now running dark and sluggish with blood and viscera, its surface reflecting the charred remains of the great elder tree at the center of the town. An ancient oak, once a symbol of community and life, now stands broken and blackened, its limbs reaching toward the sky like skeletal rotting fingers. The houses are in ruins, their warm honey-colored stones dulled and overrun with brambles. Flower boxes that once overflowed with blooms now hang empty with wood rotting. And yet as you look around, you catch glimpses of what Elderhaven once was, a place of warmth and joy where every corner held a story and every face was a friend. The sun glimmers faintly on the crumbling walls. And if you listen closely, you might still hear the echoes of the life that thrived here. You begin seeing the remnants of this brutal massacre that your friend Ortega had inflicted upon the town. You hear Ortega nearby muttering to himself, visibly disturbed and exhausted. You all come out and you see corpses, flames, and in the center, Ortega. You look around and you see, coming from one of the more luxurious homes, or rather what was once a luxurious home, you see the person that you recognize as Obi. Uh, would you like to describe yourself, Obi? Uh, sorry, it's it's Obi, sorry. Uh, so Obi, um, Obi is uh, a, a, a middle class, almost upper class noble of the town who is pretty convinced he's the upperest of the classes. That matters less now that the classes have burned down. Um, he's elderly and, uh, you know, for an elaborate elf, that's saying something. His green and gold wares, his hat are used to be fancy because he probably spent a bunch of money on them once. Um, and has been riding that for a long time. He's long ears, 
flow almost into his long hair and a, and a goatee of shock white and usually there's small petty magic floating about him just enough to cost him nothing and to, and to make it clear that it costs him nothing um, but that's not on right now he rolls out the man who had previously been the most okay sorcerer in town in a town that isn't here anymore you see he's looking at the small hovel where one of the more curious creatures of the town had made its home. Grach, would you like to explain who you are? So, uh, you see the about just under two feet tall, the brightest blue grum in the land. There is no brighter blue frog to be seen. He's very nimble, but he looks well fed. His his tummy is like just a tad bit plump. And he carries with him an oversized boomerang. So he calls himself Gur because he can't speak. He can only speak his native frog tongue. But most people would just call him Boomer because he carries a boomerang. Mm. He's got little white shorts on and a red scarf. And he is the town skipped. He's very good at hiding and sneaking and he's he's good at understanding nature and things like that and if things go missing he's usually the one to find it near him we see coming back into town from her outpost potentially being one of the first ones in the area to have fallen lark would you care to explain who you are uh so lark is kind of this elven looking woman who has sort of this like fey touched look to her she has like pure white eyes she has these like horns that curl back over her head um and she carries a long bow she's a hunter and she hasn't been in town for very long she's kind of a a traveler who's been all over the Feywild, but she has been here long enough to understand what's at stake here and what has been lost, and she doesn't know what the next move is, but she knows she has to keep moving, so she's she's heading into the center of town. And coming out from the stables, we see who you all know as Moozy, but real name Maisie. Would you like to explain who you are? Uh, Maisie, or as her friends call her, Moosey, because she kind of looks like a cow. She's got her long, droopy ears. She's like a grayish, maybe hint of blue to her skin tone. Um, she is wearing mostly leather type armor but then it looks like she's got this mossy covering on her definitely homemade um and kyle's introduction was pretty perfect that she came out of the stables because i was going to say she's the little animal caretaker you all see each other and the one thing that you had in common that you didn't realize you had in common before was during the trial of ortega to determine his exile or not You've all known Ortega to be the the silent protector of your town. None of you really truly wanted to exile Ortega. You knew that there were far worse things than whatever it was that he was doing. And you would rather have him on your side than not. But being it was only the four of you, majority rules and he was exiled anyways. Due to his exile, the rage had taken over him and he lost a bit of who he was. You come now, you see Ortega in the middle of the towns where the now burning elder tree lays. He looks at all of you and he goes, Sorry, I need to get moving. Ortega starts to turn and starts to... You all just see the little blue frog hold up a hand to wave by and just go, and he has a tear in his eye. I, uh, OB calls out, wait, oh, stop. Why'd you do that? This is you. This is who you were being. What happened to you? Who knows? Let's just say what I'm feeling is not mutual. I think this is the first time that I haven't felt her choke hold on me. I'm slowly realizing I don't have much time. I need to leave this place. I know there's a beyond somewhere. I need to get away from her or I'll do this again. I hate to say it, but I'll I'll never truly be free if I stay here. If no one else is doing anything, I can hold, I can hold on a second if someone wants to. Um, otherwise, Obi walks up closer to him as close as he can, but not that close. 
If you get out of here, you never do this again. You never forget what you did. Yeah. These scars, they're with me from now until always. Some things can't be undone. A life you still have. I can't say why I spared you all. Must be a reason. I don't say it often, but I sure you could use some help. I'll leave this place. I just don't know how. Can I again, Arcana check? Yeah. Does Boomer know how? Uh, make a history or Arcana check. Anyone can. In which case? Lark, you can make the survival check with this one. Perfect. I need that. It's a 13. I do survive. <laughs> well, Lucy, Lucy gets That's expert in survival person being. That's an 11 for me on an arcana check. Uh-huh. History is eight, 18 for Boomer. Okay. I will say with the with the rangers in the party, um, they would um, be able to to make this with survival if they whatever their number is. It, it, it's it's based on their tracking ability and what they've learned. I'm not a ranger, but I'm a scout. So you're a scout? Yeah. Lucy, Lucy got 16. Uh, so then I'm a 23. 23, okay. Only 15 for but Lucy did history. Okay. Sorry, 21. Uh, not the other thing, 21. Right now, Obi, I guess he's just real mad. <laughs> <laughs> With uh, anyone who got higher than 15, you have heard that there is an ancient waystone that you have come uh, uh, for Lark, at least, has come across in her travels before she became part of the town. As for Boomer... Boomer is way easier. Just call him Boomer. Boomer. um, So as as for Boomer, this is... You've... You've heard stories of passers coming and going through the town, talking about a waystone. You know, you know that the path is not straightforward. You know that the landscape of the Fey is alive, constantly shifting, and trees will oftentimes move to block paths, and rivers can be known to flow uphill. You know that the the way to this waystone is going to be perilous, but you know it can be done. And Boomer is is going to point to Lark and with his boomerang start drawing a map on the ground, having heard about the way point from her. Lark's gonna like circle around and and check the the drawing, make a couple adjustments here and there, and then kind of nod and look up and go, I think what Boomer is trying to say is that there's this waystone that we could seek out that might be the key to going somewhere new. Well, going somewhere new seems to be the top priority for this creature I thought I knew. If there's a fast way to get him out of here, I say we do it. Fast, but dangerous, certainly. And Obi and looks around the, the wreckage around him and says, more dangerous? Boomer has covered his eyes and is kind of like shaking with his boomerang, like like he's scared to go on the, the journey. If anyone else is doing anything, I will uh, move over to Boomer and sit down next to him. Um, I think he's probably too scared to have an arm around him, but he feels me sitting next to him and he knows I'm there. You do or you don't put an arm around him? Uh, to be honest, like I, Obi would do what he knows is best. I don't know the character that well personally, but like, like whatever, if it makes sense. Because to be honest, it seems Obi, like he's scared. Obi so I don't think he would. Not to put an arm around. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm thinking like, no, you're just going to sit next to him to let him know he's there. It's very poisonous. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, that makes sense. It is, uh, so as Obi sits down, he's like, he's so reflective. And, uh, but sits, sits next to him so that, uh, the boomer knows he's there. Boomer is, what, I, I missed what race you are. Sorry. I'm in the last Oh, okay. Um, Boomer's still shorter than you. Um, yeah. And he's just going to sit down next to you. Because he's uh, the size of a toddler. No. I want to look up at Maisie, Moosey, while we're sitting there. Um, you're here for a reason, too. What do you say? Moosey's sad that all the little animals are dead. Moosey does not know why Ortega did it. Ortega does not know why he did it. Just look around. Moosey will help Ortega find stone so that Ortega does not do it again. Thank you, Lucy. Um, while they're speaking, uh, Boomer is trying to see if the town fountain is not wrecked. 
the town fountain, you don't have to make a search for this. The town fountain is, um, it, it's, it's definitely not good right now. There's some unfortunate. Is there enough water for, for Boomer to sit in? <laughs> yeah, there would be enough water for Boomer to sit in. Whether it's fully water okay. or not is a different story. That's ultimately the problem is that it's more blood than water. <laughs> Oh yeah, man, and public fountains are bad anyway, but yeah. mass so fountains really needs to be that's wet. Bad. So Boomer's gonna sit in the blood pool uh, because he needs to immerse himself in water for an hour every day or he gets exhausted. Yes. Would Macy know this being a druid? Yes. Moosey thinks Boomer needs to find a river. Up or down, doesn't matter. Boomer, Boomer needs water and that's not water. Yeah. Boomer is like sitting in it and like usually you see him like splashing in water every day um, like a little toddler would uh, and he's like lifting his arm and it's just like goofing off and he looks uncomfortable <laughs> Rightly so um, I think that's an eyeball You should get out of the fountain Let's go I, find you, River Boomer sees about three flies buzzing around said eyeball and <laughs> And then he gets out because it's not fun where he is at, and he doesn't think it would suffice for what he needs. Looking at the map and wondering if there's any path to the stone that is by a river, I would like to then work with Lark to be like, is there a path where we can leave him, keep him good for his scouting skills and being wet, but also show move toward stone? I don't look at maps the same way I used to. Some people say I'm blind. I'm not blind. You don't like maps anymore. You, you just old. No, you can't hold it. It's just some, sometimes people start liking maps. So, Lark, where's the, uh, where, where, where's the river? Is there a path to, to, to go there? We do uh, the map for Moosey? Anybody know? I mean, I know. I can, I can see it for sure. I just don't like to. Yeah, can I, um... Boomer's gonna roll through the dirt back uh, to try and get the blood off of him. So, so now he's just covered in blood. And he looks can like I a muscle. Can I just... Can I just press to digitation him for a minute? <laughs> sure. You can. <laughs> stop it. Nope. Stop. Stop. You're making it worse. You're making stop. No, stop it. Oh, Jesus. Press hey. digitation a touch spell. <laughs> oh, no. If it is, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Boomer's perfectly happy being muddy. <laughs> He probably yes, thinks it's a... don't like it. <laughs> it might nullify his uh, toxic skin. <clears throat> the dirt. At any rate. Do, I was going to say, do I have a sense of, like, the 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 waterways in the area and how that might relate to a uh, path to the waystone? There, so there is a there is a uh, river that does flow through the town on the southern side. Um, now that is the town that is, or sorry, that is the river that is right now not good. Um, you had come from the southern side. Now there's a bridge that goes over there, and at some point that river will lead up, um, and, and it will have cleared at that point. Um, you know that. With the Fey being constantly shifting, there's never the there's never really a true map. Just kind of uh, you know the locations of certain things. Now um, you do know that the Waystone is located close to a patch of blood roses. Um, it's you know that these these flowers are not fey in origin which they come from another place is basically what what it is so you know that when you start seeing an abundance of these blood roses you know that you're heading in the right direction not necessarily in the right path because there is none but you're going into that area where this waystone is <clears throat> And there is a river there as, uh, that, that does flow through there as well. Okay. Thank goodness. <laughs> well, you guys, um, at, at this point, you look around and you see Ortega kind of off in the distance. He's, 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 he's looking off into the distance. And he turns to you and he says, look, whatever we're going to do, we got to do it soon because she's coming. I can feel her already, and it won't be long before you do, too. If you're alive, she's going to want to know why. Okay, stop sitting. Come, come. Let's go. 
Oh, moving around, she was she was good. Does does Obi understand exactly who she is and her powers, or is this a new person to Obi? She's not a new person to Obi. She's not a new person to anybody, really. Um, you know that Ortega has been involved in and in, in with this this person before for many times, and um, you get the idea that there's more to her. You guys knew that she was powerful. All of you knew that she was powerful, but you get you get the idea that she had been using Ortega for sure. So you know who he's talking about, and you know that at any given time, things could go south for you guys if she is upset. <clears throat> Lucy does not want So do we know about her powers? Like, do we know about what's involved in her, like... Sorry, I'm trying to figure out if she's a person or an entity. Yes. Do we know that or not? Yes. You know... Yes. You know her, <laughs> you know her as an elf. Um, if you want, actually, make a... Make a history check. All right. Yes, proficiency. 19 plus proficiency. Uh, let's learn some lore, kids. Uh... Proficiency of three. Nope, I didn't choose that one. Never mind. So 19. You know that Nerebi is a young, beautiful elven maiden. She has long, silky brown hair that cascades down her back, framing her delicate face. Her burgundy skin glows in the dappled light, giving her, giving her an otherworldly allure. Her almond-shaped eyes, deep emerald green, seem to sparkle with mischief and charm. You know that she moves with effortless grace, and her slender form dressed in flowing emerald green robes that match her eyes. Each step a dance that captivates those who behold her. Her smile is warm and almost inviting, hinting at the promise of something more, something tantalizingly just out of reach. Is oh? is she Faye? She, Would I know if she's... She is Faye. So Faye are my favorite enemy. Could I make a survival check to kind of get a sense of if I know where or how she might appear to us or if there's something that we can avoid or if there's any particular risks associated with her that I might be able to know where she is or that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, make your, make your check. Awesome. Oh my god. Oh, I have advantage. That's good, I need it. Not 20. <laughs> Always bring a ranger. Always bring a ranger. So yeah, that's a 24. <clears throat> You being so tuned to the Feywild, you have had the luxury or maybe the curse of being one of the first ones to constantly watch out for Fey creatures and things that enter the town at any given time. You've learned, or at least now it's starting to make sense to you. Whenever Ortega has come into the town, it's always met with a gust of wind, with a female laughter, sinister and maniacal. Somewhere beyond your current prowess of tracking. She's everywhere and she's nowhere. But to Ortega, she's his heart. I think that um, time is of the essence and I don't know if it's possible to travel in this place without Nerebi knowing but if it is we should go now I think I think I can guide us where we need to go I have a sense of these things and and Boomer I, I'm sure you can help with your your scouting knowledge and and Muzi your sense of nature and wilderness certainly rivals my own and Obi I'm really good at the shitty is the problem but like I don't even like touching sap it's sticky you don't have to touch the sap Obi but it's shiny I guess what I'm saying is I want to come with you folks in a wheel but like I'm just I'm a bit out of my element but if my element comes up I'm here to help and want to Boomer's gonna walk over to Obi and he's gonna hold up his boomerang as if he was like 
instead of reaching to hold your hand, he's just holding his boomerang up so that you can hold the other end of the boomerang. Obi takes it. Okay, my trust. And and Boomer starts leading him like a powerhouse toddler would. <laughs> <laughs> Catches him a little bit off guard and his hips bad, so it takes him a second, but he catches up and except that you're probably way stronger than him, so like he probably goes to do it like a ten pound toddler, but he does it more like a four pound toddler. He appreciates it and goes with you. We load up a map, put me right next to Boomer. <laughs> sure. Moosey will follow Obi oh, in case he trips <laughs> so that she can catch him and not break his hip. This is a good plan, Moosey. <laughs> so you set out out of the town, and as it fades from view, you see the smoke and the ash just rising through the horizon above the trees. In one minute you see it, the next minute you don't, as the trees shift and hide the city once again. You now look forward at the untrodden path laid ahead of you. Ortega, being the stalwart protector, leads on forward without an inclination as to where he's going. Behind him, you hear subtly the female laughter. <laughs> ever so silently along the wind. You eventually make your way to a relatively stable path that seems to have been carved out or written out in some of the trees that seem to be shifting every which way. And you see a, uh, a familiar... Um, this is in, this is just, it's, there's no check. It's like the trees that you're looking at, you, you start to see them. Um, you see like a, kind of like a spiral shape um, carved into a lot of the trees. And you start to get the sense that this is more or less the way that you're supposed to go towards the way gate. You stumble through and every couple minutes or so you have to stop and you have to catch your bearings. You continue on and at this point the you've lost track of these symbols. You find yourself in a part of the forest that you've never been in. I need everyone to make a survival or nature check for me please. 14 for Boomer. <sighs> Natural one. 17. 16. You look around and you have no recollection of this place. You have to take a moment to really think about where you are. You all spend what feels like hours. A day goes by. Two days go by. Two months. Five years. You all suffer through this rapidly transforming and shifting momentous area of the forest. You just spent five years of your life and you didn't even realize it as you are lost in this forest. You all take exhaustion. Did my natural one just cost us five <laughs> years of our lives? Yes, it did. <laughs> this is the Fey. <laughs> we were like from being young and spry to very, very old. You don't. Like, you don't. We don't feel it. You don't feel it. Yeah, that's good because yeah. we're be dead. Just <laughs> yeah. The rapidly changing <laughs> magic of this of the, of the wild essence of that is the Fey. Getting lost in the Fey is not a good thing. Our Lucy means no offense, but Lucy does not think you know where you are going. No. She thinks we've been walking in circles. Well, circles are actually pretty important symbols in the Fae, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. And I would argue that the Fae is just sometimes tricksy like that, and it's probably going to be fine. Those symbols that we saw I, I don't think was that long ago so if we can just kind of get back to that kind of um i think that will be what i'm saying is i think we're on the right path and um just sort of like a detour i think it'll be good He's going to like start like doing her tracking thing of being like, well, this, there were things on the trees and that was good. Let's see if I can go back to that. Omar has not sat in river yet. 
That's true. Boomer is starting to look there, like there is a river. dry. There is a river. That don't yeah, don't worry about that. Okay. <laughs> That's no, you guys are okay there. Like you guys are wa- walking around and there's a river that you're following. It's just the way that the magic works. You see the river and it's it's there and it's like, okay, it's there, and you keep walking. Okay. You're never getting to a destination. Um, you guys are okay, <laughs> don't worry. All right. Boomer's not a dried piece of roadkill on the side of the road. He's not he's not a piece of Okay. He needs to rest near water so that he can like sit. It. Yeah. If we're not resting, we don't ought to be a near water. Yeah. Um, while Lark is trying to retrace her steps, looking for these symbols, I need everyone to make a perception check for me, please. Not Lark, including me. You're busy doing other things. If that dice is going into dice jail. Because <laughs> it costs now, us five years. I will say. One. I will say that because I'm in a forest, I do remain alert to danger even while I'm doing other things. So if this is a dangerous situation, I'm like my spidey sense. Well, usually perceptive and usually really good at survival. He's currently licking his boomerang. You got a nat one on the perception? No, but I mean, it. He got a two. Close enough. It's close enough. I hope it's not a group balance check, but I rolled another nat one using a different d20. Gosh. And I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what's happening, guys, and I'm really Wash sorry. your so dice. I've been this five years. I've tried, they're brand new. I just, Wash I them. just, I didn't put them out of the thing. They're supposed to be lucky and good. So. <laughs> I am sorry. T- <laughs> with, a, with, with a plus five. You all start to hear the laughter come closer and closer. And at some point, you actually think you hear through the actual woods and not the wind. Ortega, darling. Lucy's ears are twitching nervously. I need to Ortega. I'm going to make the... Okay, we're good. Um, Ortega, I don't turns, be- he looks to Lark. At this point, you find exactly what you were looking for and you take off into that direction. Ortega immediately starts running behind you. What do you Moose, do? Moose is running too. You start running. You literally clumping as best I can. Well, but everybody's running. He is slowly losing ground. I feel like Ortega would probably. He doesn't even care at this point. He probably like picked you up and he's just taking the poison. It's just something that Ortega would do. <laughs> Boomer would just jump and hold him on his back like a frog. Yeah. Like he would just. Yeah, like like a. Back to the like that he can't keep up, so he just decides to keep up. <laughs> O- Obi is still surprisingly spry when it comes to movement speed. So he is able to keep up, but you've never heard an elf breathe that hard. <laughs> it almost sounds musical, but like out of tune. <laughs> I love that. And, and you probably just see That's Boomer not bad acting. Off That's the, not you, you probably see Boomer like turn upside down on Ortega's back and let go with his hands, and he's like trying to like. <laughs> motion you to like hurry up come on let's keep up keep up <laughs> no thanks for that it really helps thank you for waving your arms i feel better now so you guys start running off into the direction following these symbols as best as possible i'm just gonna roll a stealth check to see how well i can hide on or take that blue frog i was gonna take a roll for fun but now i'm scared of all of my new dice <laughs> Each set came with two d20s and then other and then the other dice. I've rolled one d20 from each new set, and each were a natural one. Bad. It's, it's bad hoodoo. If anybody is actively looking for Boomer, you can't see him. Because I rolled a net point. It was so blue. Where did he go? So as you start booking it, you come to another area, clears out, and it's a, a very nice oasis it, there, you see the waterfall as it's flowing up out of this pond and the pond itself is this luscious pinkish violet colored water and you see very mystical fey creatures bathing the trees go and they encase you around and you start to hear little tiny pixies and sprites start to frolic around you going <laughs> 
Boomer is absolutely wiping his lips. You hear... May I... Oh, sure, Gwen, please. You hear one of the pixies. I can be cracked, made, told, and played. I've often found where laughter is laid, though I'm not magic. I can make you cheer. What am I that brings joy near? And then she repeats again. I can be cracked, made, told, and played. I'm often found where laughter is laid. Though I'm not magic, I can make you cheer. What am I that brings joy near? <laughs> and you see a bunch of them start to frolic around you, and I need all of you to make an intelligence check for me, please. Intelligence saving throw. Sorry, intelligence saving throw. Oh, Lucy is not intelligent. My intelligent frog. 16. Got a seven with a plus four for a seven. I got a 16 with a minus one. 14. Okay. Boomer is licking his lips like Because it's the best roll I've had all day. 18 for me. 18. So anyone who got less than 15. Oh, come on, man. Oh, oh. You start to feel enthralled by these pixies. They're the most adorable little things, the cutest things. You don't even realize that they're casting spells on you, charming you. Lark, you've seen this before. You you know that these pixies and sprites are up to no good. You know that they're little tricksters. You know that in order to pass, you have to play their game. You know that this one is challenging you to a game of riddles. Would I know? Are there? Well, okay. Would I know? Do bad things happen to me if I get the riddle wrong? Or is it just like a you can't pass situation? It might be a um, it might be. It might be not. You don't really know. You've never been in a situation where time is of the essence when you're dealing with these. It's true. Okay. And I will tell you the riddle once more. (laughs) And I will say it in a normal person's voice. (laughs) Love it. I love that for us. Can be cracked, made, told and played. I'm often found where laughter is laid. Though I am not magic, I can make you cheer. What am I that brings joy near? Like Lucy does not know answer to riddle. <laughs> Boomer's drooling over these fairies, pixies. Hey, sorry. I'm enthralled, which is not a condition I'm used to. What does that mean when I'm enthralled? Like, what can I and I can I not do? It means... That is a very good question. So it, it basically just means that you're not able to... Pass. I got out. You're not able to pass through here until the whole entire group is no longer enthralled. Every riddle answered correctly is one more chance to become not enthralled. You guys. So if they answer the riddle correctly, do I become unenthralled? Yes. Or am I? Okay. Cool. 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 So every correct one that happens. You guys can each make that save again to try to become unenthralled. You guys can still answer it. I got it. I know what it is. I can be cracked, made, told, and played. I'm often found where laughter is laid. Though I am not magic, I can make you cheer. What am I that brings joy near? (laughs) Lark is going to um, come right up to the pixie, like eye contact, face to face, and go, Oh, little pixie, I think I know. Aren't you telling me about a joke? I need everyone to make that intelligence saving throw for me again, please. As the pixie goes, Ooh, smarty pants, are you? How about another? <laughs> uh, I got 17. That's only a nine. Ooh, so two more are enthralled still. As you. Am I still enthralled? No, you're not. Or am I unenthralled? No, um, Obi and. Uh, We're just definitely still drooling, thinking of eating these little pixies. So, oh, that boomer. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta go. In gardens green or forest shade, I'm often seen but rarely stayed. With petals bright or leaves so white, I bloom and grow, then wither and hide. What am I? Is there any way you'd put that in the chat? <laughs> in gardens green or forest shade, I'm often seen but rarely stayed. With petals bright or leaves so wide, I bloom and grow, then wither and hide. What am I? Are you a flower? 
I need you guys to make that in save for me again as another pixie pipes up. Here's a trickier one just for you, smarty cookies. I'm enthralled. Yeah. <laughs> 18. <laughs> I'm not enthralled yet. Not enthralled? 18 for oh, me as well. People are snapping out of here. And Boomer is no yeah. longer. No, I got a 20. Unnatural. Okay. Ooh. I wear a coat that's not my own, and yet I move when the wind is blown. I hide in shadows, bright and fair, and vanish when you think to stare. Can you say that again, please? I wear it sounds like that blinky thing that shows up in my eyes. I try to follow it, and it disappears, but I don't think that's what she means. I wear a coat I don't think so. that's not my own, and yet I move when the wind has blown. I hide in shadows, bright and fair, and vanish when you think to stare. What am I? This one's a tough one. This one is tough enough that I'm going to want to try something. Okay. I'm not enthralled, and I'm going to meta magic a subtle spell, removing all somatic visual components from a spell. Okay. And I'm going to cast Charm Person <laughs> on the joke-telling fairy and just say, oh, friend, you told me this one before, remember? You told me the answer was... Uh, what's the saving yeah. throw that she's got to make? It's a wisdom saving throw. Okay, okay. Come on, Mother Magic, please. What do they have to beat? Uh, that, sorry, that's a great question. I've never done this before. Um, charm person, wisdom saving throw. Um, cast a spell, second word. Oh, your spell save. How do I... Oh, my spell save DC. Uh, your spells. My spell save DC you. is a 13. The fairy stops and looks at you and goes, <laughs> Really me? I have told you this one already. It was a reflection. Oh, of course. Thanks. <laughs> it's a good one. I'm glad you told it again. Oh, by the way, it's a reflection. Because she gave you the answer, that intelligence saving throw unfortunately sticks. So it's still just mazy. But that's sitting on the ground, trying to get a pixie to land on her finger. The last one pipes up. She says, I dwell in silence and darkness deep, yet my presence is known when shadows creep. I'm neither alive nor made of stone, yet I grow and change in a realm of unknown. <laughs> if you can guess this one, you guys are free to go. Sorry, would you, you, think would you please say it again? I dwell in silence and darkness deep, yet my presence is known when shadows creep. I'm neither alive nor made of stone, yet I grow into change in a realm of unknown. What am I? This one is this one is real tough. This one is like I am so long level tough. <laughs> There's the uh, in the chat in the, the the VoIP chat since I know this one's a toughie. Would you guys mind if I read it aloud? That helps me, please. Yes, I please. dwell in silence. I dwell in silence and darkness deep. Yet my presence is known where shadows creep. I'm neither alive nor made of stone. Yet I grow and change in a realm of unknown. It is here. I dwells in silence in darkest places. Presence is known where shadows creep. Not alive, not made of stone, and grows in the realm of unknown. It's fear. Holy shit, Josh. <laughs> is it? I'm uh, sorry. I don't usually solve riddles, but I, I'm afraid a lot. So, like, <laughs> I want to call it a friend, uh, but they're all here and the rest are dead. So, I guess, unless anyone else objects, I think the answer is fear. I cannot answer you. I like these little pixies. Pretty sweet, but they're also going to kill us. So, like, I mean, just be careful there, Moosey Pants. Next time, don't cheat. Wait, she couldn't tell I cheated. I used a subtle spell. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this one did. This one knew, though. How? Like, how I couldn't. They, there's no way they could tell. It was a. It was a subtle spell. It was a subtle spell, but the other. They might not know how you cheated, but they know that the other one most definitely ever told you that riddle before. Yeah. Oh, it's true, and they literally said it out loud. No, you're right. The evidence yeah. is <laughs> like they pretty, know. It's pretty clear. <laughs> no, you're right. That was that was that was not the sneakiest way I could have pulled that off. Uh, you, did it. you did do it. And I did. The, the, the yes. yes. Maisie snaps out of it and looks around and the pixies start to <laughs> as they scatter off and they start playing in the water 
you see this water seems to have some magical properties to it. You see unicorns and uh, other Kirin and, and fey folk and creatures alike bathing. You seem to be enjoying it. She's seen unicorn now first time. Moosey, Moosey may be turning into unicorn later, just so you know. Unicorns are fey creatures, so unfortunately not a beast. Oh, okay. Yep. Moosey did not know that. Maybe when Moosey gets stronger. Mm-hmm. Moosey, if you want to be a unicorn, I believe you can be. I don't know any of the rules of magic or even how to be a druid, but I believe in you. <laughs> Moosey can be whatever she wants to be. She just might not look like it. He's damn right. That's right. No one puts Moosey in a corner. No one. Uh, so, <laughs> so, that was too stupid to say out loud. Um, so... Okay. Also, Kyle, I love, I've never done D&D riddles before, and that was really cool. I liked that a lot. When I got joke, I was like, I'm never going to die. I'm going to live forever. (laughs) I just felt the same way. I literally had to cheat to solve the other one. Uh, but yeah, that was cool. That was cool, Kyle. That was really well done. Um, I enjoyed that a lot. Sorry, I'm a bit distracted, to be honest. Team, I kind of forget where we're like, we're trying to follow this path to the stone. Wait, um, the away gate. Right now, the away gate. Right now, as it stands, um, there, like I said, there is this pool of pink water and like violet swirling, and you see these big creatures bathing inside of it and seemingly having a good time as the water is flowing up the waterfall. Are the swirl patterns around here or in nearby areas, or is it just kind of... You don't see the swirl pattern in the trees, but if you could make a perception or a survival check for me, please. I got another natural. <laughs> I'm using a different die, too. <gasps> Why are we? Okay, so it's opposite night for you and me, then? It's opposite night. There we go. You know what? The last Always shot... bring a ranger. Always bring a ranger. <laughs> the last one shot that we did, you guys were crushing your natural 20s, too. So. Um, so you notice that in the pink and violet swirl in the waterfall as it's flowing upwards, you see... The f- swirl happens to be the same shape as the one in the trees. Yeah. Dark is going to kind of walk up to the edge of the water. She's not going to touch it because she's she doesn't know about that. And she's going to kind of like tilt her head and 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 squint and kind of look and go. Does, any, does anybody else see that? That's um the, uh, you know, the swirl thing that we were doing before is that um, we're doing that. I think we should do it and go check that out over in the... Do you see that in the waterfall? How the waterfall is doing that sort of... It's like a swirly thing. Obi? Sure do! And as the Obi walks forward, clearly not able to see it. Uh, but but really what I just want to... Like, oh, sure, he's he's grandpa who doesn't want to get the keys taken away. So he he's like, yeah, no, oh, sure, absolutely. <laughs> I see it. With a sharp eye like that. I mean, it took me an extra second, but that's why you bring a ranger. <laughs> you keep leading the way, and I will see who catches the next one first. I bet it will be me. Sure. Yes, Obi. Sure. I'm just going to walk Let's... about 10 feet or so behind you just to keep wide view. That's yes. great. I think so. Keep it in the red. Mm-hmm. Really cover our bases there. Absolutely. Now, come on, Froggy. Thank you here for being in there. Right there, Boomer. Okay, Boomer. Uh, all right, Mochi. Mostly- Lucy, how you doing? You feeling okay? We, I'm not sure. You, you must have seen the obvious, the obvious side. You saw it too, I'm sure. Uh, hey, what are you going? Let's like, go. Oh. Moosey's ready to go. Moosey has realized the pixies have sharp teeth and don't want to be close to them anymore. <laughs> Boomer, being immune to any poisonous effects, is gonna t- put his hand in the water. Okay. okay. You put your hand in the water, and you, as you put your hand in the the water kind of avoids you as you stick your hand in. It, you, you stick your hand in, and as the water's flowing upwards, it's almost as if it evades and it, it forms back. As it, like you haven't you, done it. You just right through. You guys can probably actively see some of the poisonous skin on him, like steaming. He's so mad that he can't touch the water. <laughs> yeah, this water you can't touch. Mm-hmm. Well, no, that's like, not the normal water, river. Does it like Come on. lead somewhere or? Are you going to go in further? Uh, yeah, he wants to touch the water, so he's going to keep going. 
So as oh. most boomer, most boomer move ever. Oh, this hurts a bunch. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to will it into being what I think. OK, boomer. So you look around and you notice that like these these animals, these very majestic fey creatures, they are bathing and playing in the water. The water is touching them physically and it's having no adverse reactions whatsoever. You, the, the lot of you, or at least boomer right now, as you stick your hand through and you, you, you want to touch the water and you kind of bounce into the, the waterfall, the water, the water up, the water rise, the, the water rise um, just kind of molds around you as you disappear to the other side. You look around and you're in this stone pass, the stone passageway, like a cavern. The rest of you just see him just boop, gone. <laughs> Yeah, um, Lark's in and there you, immediately. And you probably hear what sounds like Yoshi really pissed off. You hear nothing. On the other side. <laughs> oh. You hear the waterfall. <sighs> the water rise. <sighs> That's all you hear. Yeah, Lark is and going to... in this cavern hears what sounds like Yoshi <laughs> screaming in anger. <laughs> Lark is going to... I would have had a couple of little buttons to push with different Yoshi sounds. I'm going to, after observing the animals and observing Boomer, decide that maybe this is fine <laughs> and I start heading towards the water rise. What do you like to do? Well, she's going to test it with a finger. Just kind of poke it or through it, I guess. And then stick her head through. It's okay. There's a big hole there. Let me walk through. Muzi, when you stick your hand and your head through, you oh, actually no. feel the water touch you. Mm. As you wash, as you as you walk through, you feel the water cleanse you. For some reason, out of all of you, you're the only one that the water touched. You, She's gonna shake her whole body, just like a cow. Have all the drops come off. One luck point. Ooh. For whatever this reason was, this water had something to do with your connection to nature in its animalistic, druidic form. Mm. And it didn't affect Lark the same way. He's very wet. You're wet? Oh, yeah, you're soaked. (laughs) And Obi? He keeps trying to shake like a dog and get as much water off as possible. Um, sorry, I I don't think I've walked through yet, have I? Not yet, no. As, this is cheap, let me know, I've never been a sorcerer before. As, uh, Muzi was walking through, I probably would have been able to see through the other side and Misty stepped right through it, because I'm an Aladdin elf. You can certainly mm. try. <laughs> Well, I got to give God confidence. I'm going to try and misty step, assuming I can see a little glimpse of through the other hallway where things are fine. I'm probably just going to try and scoot around there and misty step. So as you attempted to misty step across. Well, that sounds bad already. <laughs> Oh, come on, good goodness gracious me, I'm on the edge of a knife, and I think I'm about to split legs and have it go up the middle. Obi. Oh, shit. You find yourself in this very weird, as as you misty step, you've you've done it before, you, you know what to do. You find yourself stuck in this pink swirling violet limbo. You feel yourself physically moving through the water, and it's not the same way that any of the others move through. The water is moving through you when you hit. Not so much. That doesn't sound nice at all. You manage to make it to the other side. However, that triggers your wild magic surge. I need you to roll. A D100. I'm going to have to use... um, I'm going to have to use the... uh, I don't even know how to do this in, in Roll20. I've never rolled in, in Roll20 and I don't have a D100. Oh no, there's a way to roll a D100. You want me to roll right. it for you? Nope, I've got it. I'm going to make some poor choices right. with Cursed Dice. Nice. So I rolled a double zero and an eight. So that would be just eight. It is. By the way, team, I'm a wild magic sorcerer. Have fun and buckle up. Now you see. Uh oh. Because this is the Fey Wild, we're not using the regular wild magic surge table. <gasps> so, oh. As you get to the other side, you have a. You find that this water has filled your entire, every orifice of your body. 
And as you... No, I like my orifices the way they are. As you pat yourself down and around, you feel... You feel like a little tiny bulge that wasn't there before. And you see the sweet smelling liquid swirling inside your body as it moves around and you can move it around and you can bring it to your hand. And as you bring it to your hand, it's almost as if you could pop it like a like a like one of those calcium, build, you know, like a like a blister, pop it like a blister build. You see that the violet pink or the pinkish violet is, is inside. And you hear in some sylvan tongue that you've never heard before, as if you know, you can cast by popping this blister, cast enlarge or reduce for free. So first off, I actually speak sylvan. I got to pick two languages and I picked that for some reason. But that's neat. Also, so gross. Also, so cool. <laughs> You're lucky. <laughs> I will say that. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't know we were doing fey wild magic, though I should have. And now I am deeply afraid. So you get into this cavernous area. All of you and Ortega doesn't seem to be phased. He just walks through like uh, like like Lark and Boomer did. So the only two that seem to be adversely affected were one that used to spell or a spell like ability and one who is in tune with the nature. You pass on further through this cave as you come up to the other side of this long, dark cavern as it opens up into this very beautiful, charming glade. The second you step foot in here, you feel this bliss, immense bliss, happiness. You smell lotus leaves and lavender, these sweet scents that are enthralling you again, similar to what the pixies had done, that scent that you smelt. That violet liquid, the odor that was coming off is the most pungent here. Whatever was giving that water its magical properties seems to be coming from this cave exit. I need all of you to make a wisdom saving throw for me, please. Oh, <laughs> but I was enjoying the funky music and the vibe. Okay, that's not actually bad. 16. Apparently 15? I only know how to... 16. Natural 20. No, <laughs> Nicely done. That frog's invincible. A frog, the capitan. I will say that this is a charm effect. So for those who have resistance <gasps> to charms, I think that's me. Thank you so much for saying that, Kyle, because I definitely would have failed otherwise. This die is not <laughs> playing anymore. That better not be a fucking. Oh, okay, it's good. I thought that was it. Okay, we're good. It brings me up to a nineteen. 30, 20. Amazing. 16. 16. Poor Ortega. He is so enthralled in this area. Reminds him of the time that he's been with Nerubi. He doesn't want to leave. He is on the ground, frolicking in the daisies. Anything that was happening before is irrelevant, and anything that's going to happen after is doesn't matter. Hasn't happened yet. He's rolling around in these lotus leaves in the lavender field. This scent glistening all over his scarred body. His reluctance to move. Time has now overrated once again. You spend days convincing him months years no way 20 do i get to reset my spells no 27 years kyle seven years blue past is, the am I, of an eye i'm away from is the mic we still alive everyone is still alive again you don't notice the time change this just happens this is unacceptable <laughs> At this point, it has been over 30 years since you started this journey. Don't be like that. It has taken maybe half a day for you. Is how much you've aged. Half a day. Oh my god. You, the town that we came from is gonna be rebuilt by the time we go back. It's gonna it's gonna be oh yeah. what do we You all take Oh the Feywild is more Sorry, I'm sorry, Kyle, please go on. You all take one more point of exhaustion as you spend So we're at two points of exhaustion? Two points of exhaustion. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I don't want to meet. How much does Ortega weigh? He weighs like 180, 200 pounds. Cool. Moosey is a large creature and can carry... Higher. He, he, he's higher. He's probably like, what, 250, 260? 
Well, if he's a, if he's giant and tall, like he's got muscles. Too. Professional wrestler Randy Orton is six foot nine and is looking and has gained a ton of muscle mass lately and is now pushing 290 pounds. And that's a human dude. Okay, so he's probably around that at this point in his life. He's Randy Orton, man. Jeez Louise. Okay, well, Moosey can carry 330 pounds or push drag or lift 660 pounds because she is very large. So she is going to grab Ortega by the foot and start dragging him out of the um, lovely smelling place they are because she is tired of waiting for him to snap out of it. Okay. You see this, this, this move. I think this is a good move, Moosey. Moosey does not want to hear the creepy laughter from the scary lady again, so we should go. Yeah, I don't care for her at all. She seems pretty, um... All good to satisfy that anyone who laughs that evil tends to be kind of evil. I don't want to judge a book by its cover, but judging a judging a, a, a evil by its laugh, I mean, that's, there, there's not a saying about that for a reason. Sounds evil. Not do that. Oh. Take it. You, you, stop, stop fussing. Let Lucy take him. Stop it. Man. He doesn't go willingly, but you're able to pick him up. He doesn't restrain him. Like he's not, he doesn't fight against it. And um, and at some point you're able to grab him and, and fire fireman carry him, which is a shock to him because he's used to being the one to fire our, you know, fireman carry. And uh, you're able to get him out, but not before you hear, Ortega, is that you not wanting to leave? As you start to see at the end, at the, at the end of the cave, walking through, you see a shadowed figure. There's no light in the cave, so you can't make out who it is, but you know who it is. As soon as you exit the ex, the the um, the circlet of uh, where this where the the flowers were, as soon as you exit in the direction of the swirling symbols carved into the trees, you, Ortega snaps out of it, and you're able to book it once again as the voice gets further and further away once again. You finally come to a open clearing with all sorts of fae-like things and blood roses. You see at the middle of this clearing is six obelisk pillars and a what looks like a stone uh, obelisk uh, table of sorts in the center of these six pillars. And you see lying ahead is a... <laughs> it is a... It looks like the root of a tree if you were to have pulled the tree out and put it on its side. It has roots growing out of this wall as it seems to be stretching and growing over the horizontal side of the of the, the vertical side of the walls. You see a dark green exit to the other side, but in front of it, you see a massive ancient fey guardian, a centaur of sorts, but not a horse like he's more of a more of a, an elk, very large um, with horns that come out probably the size of an owl bear on his head. You see his tail matches the coloration and it's <laughs> swirling in the same style of swirls that you see as it flutters behind it wisps upwards. You see he looks to all of you and he puts his hand out. You see this green energy swirl and he puts it towards the back wall where these roots were growing out. And you see that swirling energy with the shape takes on the shape of that symbol as it swirls upwards and outwards as it takes the shape of a large portal. What you see on screen now is what it is. Oh, no. Oh, my oh gosh. No. It will. No. Yeah, I would just like to point out that I have a, like, just not that it's like better or whatever, but I did do this little sticky note drawing where I did the little roots and that you can't tell, but that's the little elk guy in the corner. It says ancient fag guardian or whatever. And I drew a little table and obelisks. Again, I'm not saying it's better. That would be weird. Why would I say that? But I did draw it. It's like pretty accurate, I have to say. <laughs> you don't need to say it. We all have eyes. Yes. 
This is awesome. I love this. Kyle, why is this so awesome and so scary? <laughs> Yo, it's Ortega. Let's go. This guy is so cool. He's so rad. He killed everyone we know and love. Not Ortega. The centaur, centaur dude? Nah, the oh, centaur, the centaur, centaur dude doesn't do shit. The centaur dude seems cool. No, no, Santa no, 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 no. he's like looks really big and he's kind of like an imposing figure on the map, which might tell you, oh, he might be bad and he might try to kill us. But like, I don't think he will because he's like super cool and rad. And I think he'll just let us walk through this portal and it'll be totally chill. Yeah, no, for sure. That's how it goes. Don't be yeah. sizest just because. I mean, it's just like. You know. he, looks, he looks at you, uh, looks at you all and without speaking actual words and in the sylvan tongue for those of you that understand i speak sylvan i would say because you're in the fey like you technically all know sylvan none of you have come from elsewhere um but yeah it's it's the sylvan tongue and um he looks and he says there are five of you however the portal can only take one i can only keep it open however long as i may live if the portal closes again the only way to open it is to take my heart and place it on that altar you may pass but everyone here will be stuck forever only one may pass mr large elk friend centaur person does that portal lead somewhere where Ortega can get away from scary laughter lady? It will take you where you feel truly at home. If it brings you back, it brings you back. I do not make that decision. However, there are six pillars in front of you. You may pick one of the six. If you t pick one of the six, you are forcing destiny, and thus you may not pass, but someone else may in your stead. So if I pick the stone, I can't go, but Ortega can. If that is what you wish. I think this is home. I am happy in home, but Ortega needs to go. Lucy would pick stone lying? for Ortega. What if he's lying? Mm. You're a fake creature, and I've lived here plenty long enough and seen enough sunsets to know that while they're all the same, they're all just a little bit different. Fake creatures lie. I am sworn to not trust the fake. I am sworn to the materials that connect the realms together. I am the one that makes the portals in the Fey. I am the one who determines who comes and goes. I'm sorry, I've just been around a been around the duck a few times, and generally when a creature says they're all powerful, I tend to think they're full of shit. I think you might be full of shit. I've only lied about one thing, and it was rather not telling the full truth to this. You see, like I said, there are five of you and there are six pillars. You may only choose one pillar. If that is the wrong pillar, the portal will close. The one that touched the pillar will die. Lucy doesn't want to touch pillar for Ortega anymore. <laughs> no offense, Ortega. <laughs> Well, I gotta say, a roll of the dice that can kill me to help Ortega. I mean, not exactly sure if to win, but you say the only thing to mm. close this gate is killing you, and that sure seems like a smart way to make sure that this group of people who want to get through don't rip your ass to shreds. I mean, if I was in your shoes, I'd probably say something similar, and trust me, I'm full of shit. It seems that the sixth has shown up. As you oh. back, you see... Now, Ruby, finally walking through, you see everything behind her start rotting as this visage of this beautiful elven maiden. You see the enchanting exterior disappear as her skin darkens to a deep, lustrous burgundy, and her eyes glow now with the fiery, otherworldly light. Large bat-like wings unfurl from her back, their membranes a dark, leathery contrast to her otherwise smooth complexion. Sharp, curving horns emerge from her forehead, glinting menacingly. Her once graceful fingers now end in claw-like nails, and a long, sinuous tail sways behind her, tipped with a wicked point. Her smile, once warm and inviting, now reveals sharp, predatory teeth. She exudes an aura of danger and seduction. 
and her presence commanding both fear and desire, a beautiful nightmare that draws you even in as it threatens to consume you. You see, she, as she's doing this, you see this mirage of everything behind her disappear as it turns to rot. And she looks to you at the ancient Fey Guardian and she says, <laughs> Well, if closing the portal is all that's going to keep Ortega here, I just need to kill you. And she snaps her fingers. Oh, no! As she snaps her fingers, you see a bolt of this electric purple energy swirl from it and a bolt directly at the heart of this ancient guardian shatters in and you see it swirls and it turns into this once majestic ancient elven ancient face stag you see it start to rot and the flame on its tail extinguishes as it crumples down to its front two legs, turns into nothing more than a tree as the portal itself closes behind it. And what you see behind you as Nerubi looks to all of you and goes, <laughs> Really? It was nothing. Now, are you going to let Ortega come with me or not? It's going to end much better for you. Boomer's going to hit her in the head with his boomer. <laughs> As he starts to, will be saying, I ended with you burning down my whole bitch yet. Lucy is going to stand in front of Ortega and cross her arms. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So as the boomerang swirls and tunks her in the head, I need Boomer to make an attack roll for me, please, when he gets back. Now, in the interlude here, let me just make sure I I got this straight, because you said a lot of words and I was listening to most of them. So (laughs) I got the part where it's like, oh, if he's dead, that's bad. The portal closes. Heart has to go on the table to reopen the portal. The only one person can go through the pillar through the portal. Yes. To go on the table to reopen the portal. For that one person to go through the portal. For one person to go through. Otherwise, there are six pillars, but whoever touches the pillar can't go through and could yes. possibly die. Yes. Right. So there's two ways. There's two ways. If the two heart ways. Is, if the heart is on the ritual table, that immediately yes. opens up the, the portal again. and it For one person you, to go through. It, it will take you wherever, yeah, for one person to go. The other choice is to choose which of the six portals will be the right portal, or which of the obelisks oh, is the that. right obelisk. And there's only one? There's only one. I mean, Kyle, come on, man. It's a five out of six chance. <laughs> like, But... It's, I like uh, it. I guess it's a one out of six chance, but that's even worse. Oh no! <laughs> touches the, the the obelisk. He can't go through. Can't have that. We gotta get him through. Oh. For all intents and purposes, I think that there's a high risk that you all don't make it out. I think we're all gonna make it. Lucy thinks you shouldn't touch this stone that has the most bones around it. Because somebody must have tried this before, right? <laughs> Maybe. Let somebody build the bones. Are there any visual indicators? Like, and by the way, I'm. If there's not time for me to do this because I'm about to wreck stuff on on her, I would like to do a side glance, if I may, before if an initiative roll comes up, to see if there are any key visual indicators on the obelisks that would differentiate them from each other. And does anything have that swirling? purple element. The purple element or the green element? Or like, I'm colorblind. Man, this feels mean now. Uh, I, I, you know what? I'm looking to try and see what differentiation exists. Okay, sure. Um, so, should I so, may I roll? Or? So what we'll do is, because the boomerang is about to smoke her in the face, I need I need uh, Boomer to make an attack roll. We will then go so, to initiative. And on your turn... Oh, if we're going right to initiative, I'm not checking shit. I'm killing folk. Okay, so Boomer makes his attack roll when he can. Okay, so with his eight for the attack, it does not hit as it just right past her. She does that maniacal laugh again. 
<laughs> is that what it's going to be? And she snaps her fingers again and you see poof, 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 poof. <laughs> All around her, you see uh, dryads and satyrs in this. The, the, they, they seem to have that same compulsiveness that Ortega has. They're all enthralled by her as they pop up out of nowhere. She goes, Very well. You're all going to die anyways. I promise your death will not be painful. Actually, no, I'm going to quite enjoy this. As I need you all to roll initiative. Oh, no. But all the dice are bad. Oh, it fell <laughs> on the <laughs> Come on. Okay, that's Fine. pretty rude. Fine, I don't, oh, that's not bad. Okay, it's less bad than I thought. Great. Oh, terrible. Oh, great. Oh, cancel. There we go. Where am I? Click on uh, I'm an 11. Mm-hmm. Now click on your token and then click initiative. That's the wrong keyboard. There we go. <laughs> we went to the ranger. And it's mid ranger. <laughs> Meech. Oh, we just didn't know. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna up. Do we know if she's an if she's I think so wow, let me start over. I think we've heard references in the campaign to Nerebi being an arch fae. Is this true or did we disagree with that? And that was just something we made up. No, we this she is an arch fae. Okay. Now I had another question. Mm-hmm. So pretty. Thank you. So pretty. He's fan. Yeah, she's pretty cool. Okay, so that brings us to the top of the round, which um, is Ortega. Now, Ortega knows what has to be done. He is going to rage, and his in his rage, he's going to run up to the ancient fey guardian that is now a tree, and he's going to try to hack at the heart to try to loose it free. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he he hits it and he's able to to kind of chimmy into it. And he takes a big chunk out of this thick bark, revealing a green uh, sap kind of as it pours out. And you see he sees inside is kind of where the heart would be more so. And it's um, it, it's it's still pulsing. Which brings us to uh, Maisie or Lark, whomever's dexterity is higher. Uh, my dex is a 14 with a plus two modifier. Oh, mine's a 17 with a plus three modifier. That's you. That's okay. That gives me more time. Okay. So, Mark, you're up. Okay, I am going to, you know, it's so sad because she's so pretty, but I will maybe shoot her a bunch of times. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark her with Hunter's Mark. Okay. Nice. And then I'm going to shoot her. So that's, so it's a Hunter's Mark is a bonus action. And then I'm going to shoot her with my longbow. (laughs) Hey. You might be thinking, if you roll really low, you can't hit her. But I'm pretty sure if I roll a natural two and I have a plus seven to hit, which gets me to a nine, like that would probably hit her, I would think. You would think. Yeah. Unfortunately, nine is, um, I know, it's just, you know, it's it's that magic number where it's like you think it's going to hit. Yeah, but then it like doesn't. And then- That's so weird. That's like something that like I encourage you to reflect on in the future, but that's cool. I'll just I like let that go just one time. I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna break down the mechanics of D and D, and I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. really, really really think about it and be like, hmm, maybe you know, didn't need that nine hit. Yeah, I'm gonna. It's because I was like aiming, and then I was like, wow, and then I missed. So all right, exactly. Yeah, uh... <laughs> she is hunter's marked. So she is hunter's marked, which is good. Maisie. You are up. I am going to use my wild shape as a bonus action mm-hmm. and become a dire wolf. And I am going to try to bite her. Yeah. Okay. Run up and give her a little chompy chompy. Um, okay, so that would be bite melee weapon attack plus five to hit. Okay. All right. Sorry. Learning. Mm-hmm. 15. 15 
just hits. Yes. Okay. Nice. <laughs> so that is. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I need some D6. Can I put my bag on? It's right here. What? Not a Alright, so 2d6 plus 3. I don't think she's a creature. I don't think that applies to her. She's not a creature, right? She's a she's a creature, yeah. Because it says, okay, hit 2d6 plus 3 piercing damage. If the target is a creature, it must succeed on a DC 13 strength saving throw or be knocked prone. Yes. So, seven points of piercing damage. Okay. What's your saving throw, please? She is actually immune to being knocked prone. Her wings are... Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. So then never mind. But it's good. It's good that you now know that she's immune to being prone. Yeah. As a reaction, she's going to look at you and go, stupid, petty little thing. And she's going to swipe you with her tail. She's going to try to attack you with her tail, which is a 22 to hit. Uh, yes. Yes. And that is, uh, not much, five points of damage as she teleports close to Ortega. Question, because I've never done this before. Yes. I would go by the dire wolf's hit points. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, then I'm... (laughs) No, I have 37, but then my character is less than that, so I just wanted to make sure that... Yeah, you're you're padding your health pool with another creature's health pool. Okay. Yeah. Um, And that brings us to... I'm just doing them all at the same turn. The the satyrs are running up to one on either side, and the dryads are going one, two, and three, with the third one going to attack Boomer. And ooh, she actually... Oh, yeah, there you go. She has an attack. Yeah, that's not that bad. Ten to hit. I'm assuming ten does not hit. Uh, oh, a 13. Yeah. And that... Boomer's not wearing any armor. That's all the Dryad can do. But the Satyrs are going to try to shoot one at Lark and one at... one at Boomer. All right. Uh, dirty 20. Oh, wait, sorry. No, 22 to hit the first one on Lark. Sad emoji. Natural 20 on Boomer. So I, uh, oh, no. So the one on... I said waterfalls emoji. <laughs> A froggy boy. The one that, little froggy boy. The one that shot Lark, it's five points of piercing uh, damage. And yeah. the one that shot Boomer is 10 points of piercing damage. Not that bad. Uh, and that is the turns, which brings us to Nerubi, who is going to look at all of you and turn around and she says, you know, I actually could use some of your services and I'd love to have a pesky dog. A nice little plaything to play fetch with. And she's going to try to fix her gaze on Obi and make Obi, she's going to try to enthrall Obi to charm. She's trying to charm Obi into servitude. Well, I have a resistance. I have resistance to being charmed or I have advantage in all my charm saves. You do. So wisdom saving throw for me, please. Wisdom saving throw? Wisdom saving. At advantage? You have advantage. Hey, listen, you motherfucking dice. I brought you from Prince Edward Island and you have not been delivered. Last try, all right? 19 plus... Um, you save. <laughs> you save. You're able to, as you look at her, and you feel this lust. You feel the same thing that Ortega has felt for years. And you're you're able to, maybe in your old age or just your natural resistance, you're able to turn away and avert your gaze, locking her away. And she goes, Well, maybe again soon. Ortega, darling, what are you doing? Are you trying to get the heart? Ah, that's just not going to do. I think we're going to keep the heart exactly where it is. And you're going to come with me. And that ends her turn. Boomer is up. Oh, did we not get Obi? Where is Obi? I think you missed me. I was at 11. You were at 11. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, I didn't put you in the initiative for some reason. 
Oh, sorry, man. I thought I put it in the system. I apologize. No, it's okay. It's it's more than likely my fault. Um, all right. So Obi, I'm, ha- I'm really happy to hop in after she said that. It's all I want to do, to be honest. That's it's fine. You you were technically before her in the initiative, but you, because you weren't in there. Um, no, I like this better. I like this better. <laughs> you would rather be after her. Okay. <laughs> after after that line where she tried to enthrall me. Yeah. Sorry, Mister. Doesn't even work anymore. But you know what? Still gets big. And I. Cast enlarge on the direwolf member of my party and turn it into a giant direwolf. Okay. So I don't know if when you said it was free, I don't know if that means it was a free, like, it, I don't know if it's still an action or if it still takes my concentration. I'm okay with either. It does. I want a giant ass. Oh, does. Really? Yes. It lasts for 10 minutes, but it doesn't take your concentration, but it does take an action to do so. You're, you're popping it and basically you're spurting it forward towards dire. <laughs> 10 minutes is all I need. Uh, and we have a giant dire wolf on the field. I have no bonus actions. And I'm just going to quickly look and see if I need to back up. Oh, no, she's over there. So I am going to going to move. Uh, why can't I start? Uh, I'm going to move in between these two pillars without touching either. Okay. And he will giggle because he made rude jokes. Of course. Brings us to Boomer. Officially. <laughs> now that Decker's asleep, uh, I can focus all my attention on Boomer being a hero, even though he's not a hero. I need a hero. Okay. Because he missed with his boomerang last time. Yes. It returns to him. It does. Yeah. <gasps> Whereas if I had hit her, it would be on the ground at her feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boomer is going to jump onto this altar so that he can see her past the thing, and he's going to bone sack action steady aim to give himself advantage and then he is going to throw his boomerang at her okay he misses it does a big wide loop between ortega and then all the way around her and it whizzes right by obi's head and it comes back to him uh and he goes and he's going to drop the boomerang and he is just going to run up to her uh he can't actually grapple her till next turn but he is basically going to go and face hug her okay all right and hope that she's not amusing the boys <laughs> well we'll see brings us to ortega who's going to take another hit on that yeah he's going to hit it which now comes comes over from the other side as the um as the this ancient fey guardian is now split in half, you see the top part of it go, and you see the heart is and it's swirling in this green energy akin to what the portal was. That is unfortunately all of Ortega's turn. Um, he is going to look at Nerebi and he's going to run towards her just to try to take the flak off. And he's he's not doing anything else, unfortunately. Um, actually, he would use a he's going to use a bonus action to try to bunt her with the back end of this great axe that he has. Oh, he's going to hit. Which deals? Just saying, at this point in time, Ortega would have two short swords. So that second attack was actually with the second short sword. But Lark is up. Okay. I'm so devastated. I will have to shoot her again. And this time, I'm pretty sure it's going to be good. Because, like, what are the odds, you know? Of course. <laughs> what are the odds? What are the odds? So, like, <laughs> sometimes you get a nat one and you're like, that's super weird. Why would I do that? It's just something I'm interested in experimenting with sometimes. So, a nat one. A nat one. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. hmm. Roll a d4 for me. Like, do I have to, though? Like, is that like kind of like one of those optional things that we're like thinking maybe we don't have to do? Yeah. You know, we, a lot of talk about the, you know, the 2024, you know, rule set being optional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, this mm-hmm. is uh, this isn't optional. It's not one of those things. Cool. It's, it's, it's two for sure. You rolled a two. Yeah. So the arrow goes right past Nerebi and actually smokes Ortega. And, just, <laughs> and he looks at you and he's what the heck? I will do the damage on that. Okay. Hey, I apologize. My bad. Is that ending your turn? I mean, I ran out of things to do. So unfortunately, yes. Okay. Brings us to Moosey Maisie's turn. <laughs> so if Moosey's 
feet is 50 feet. Could she jump over being the enlarged animal and land beside? He's giant. It's got to be. It's got to have some cool stuff. Yeah, I'll allow it. I mean, there's still like from the distance between her and Maisie right now, it's less than half. So, yeah, I would say you'd be able to use half your movement to make the jump. That's fine. Okay, Moosey is going to do it. (laughs) And while growling, bite her again. Absolutely. (laughs) She gets some bonuses for being enlarged. I'm not exactly sure what they are. They seem to apply to humanoid. The the application seems to be for humanoid characters. And so I'm not sure what that looks like when you're a giant ass dire wolf. I'm going to leave that to you. So, yeah, it's, it's weird like that. So... Um, the actual spell, I have just to pull it up here. They get um, doubles in all dimensions, weight multiplied by eight, uh, medium to large, for example. Darwolf was. Is Darwolf large? No, Darwolf's medium. Uh, large beast. Large now. She's large. Oh, it's in, now it's extra. Originally a large. Already large. Beast, it starts as large. She's I moved it up another size. Bigger, yeah. So she's actually now big. Oh. <laughs> she's a gi- literally a. Gi- I think it's a giant size. Yes. Yeah. Um, until the spell ends, the target's advantage on strength check. Now I'm not sure if you saw it, but we turned, we enlarged. I enlarged a dire wolf. Yeah. So you didn't. You now deal an extra. 1d4 damage on all of your melee attacks. How much you want to bet the new PHP updates that? It's more than that. That feels undercooked. That feels yeah, undercooked. Yeah, so 1d4? That's undercooked. Come on, Kyle, make a ruling. It is. It's all. I mean, it also does give you advantage and it makes you one size larger. Like, it does do a lot more than just increase the damage. Um, I will say this. I will say this. Just because I'm feeling special in the Feywild, maybe things work a little differently. Let's say it's. You can also add an additional d4 we'll keep we'll stay with the d4 stick with the d4 add an additional d4 to whatever the attack roll is as well as oh. the, um damage so you get to roll an extra d4 with a d20 that's really cool that's like a blessing for all of your attacks now that's awesome <laughs> uh, so that brings me up to 23 for hit and then okay so then 2d6s and a d4 yeah that's right <laughs> Okay, hold on. I gotta figure. <laughs> I like that laugh. It's a good laugh. That's my favorite laugh. Did you roll max damage? Uh, yeah, I did actually. <laughs> I rolled two sixes and a four. Wow. So six wow. points of uh, damage. Awesome. Okay, brings us to I. I think that she, was pretty much. She's covered in drool. Just, just <laughs> like, like, like extra, like, like dripping. Human-sized drool. Yeah. Yeah. You're basically, like you're basically like a Fenris wolf right now. Um, it brings us to the satyrs. One's going to shoot uh, Lark. The other one's going to shoot the. Actually, you know what? They're all really threatened by the giant wolf right now. Uh, <laughs> so they're going to be targeting the wolf. Uh, that. It's, it's the biggest threat <laughs> they're, they're and the biggest threat is also attacking their EB right now the dryads one's going to go to obi one's going to go to lark and the other one's going to go to Maisie. and this guy's going to move here to get better advantage on shot and okay so let's do this here just be sorry i missed did, does being enlarged help my ac at all it doesn't it does no okay i don't think so okay i just thought i'd check before before you told me what? All right, so the first one's not going to hit. Second one's definitely not going to hit. Now let's go to the dryads, which are... Okay, the one is going to char- try to charm Lark. Is going to succeed. And... No, no roll necessary. <laughs> what? Take me, I'm yours. Yeah, that's the attitude I have at what this point. <laughs> Wisdom. He just looks at you and you're like, oh my god. Wisdom. I'm like, oh my god, no. <laughs> Wisdom saving throw. Right. If you are, in, oh. are you an elf? I am. You have I am. So. <laughs> and charm me. I'm, <laughs> well, that's not great. Okay, it's a 14. You passed. You're okay. You're good. 
their charm is not as effective as the other charms. Um, and the other dryad's gonna try to charm Maisie. Um, so that's a wisdom saving throw uh, well. on the, the big Ooh. puppy. Please don't charm our giant wolf. Hold on. Oh, wisdom perception checks is what I have advantage. They're not wisdom saving throws. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Where's my my dice? That's the funny thing. I'm afraid to switch dice because I've been rolling good. You say that now. Ooh, and that's a 19. Good. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Good, good, good. So that is, um, oh, the other one's gonna try and get OB again. So um, same idea, um, but it's probably easier. Sorry, uh, are you attacking me or is this a wisdom Wis- saving wisdom throw? Wisdom save. Advantage? That's a, well, listen, one of them fell off, the other one's a nat 20. You're redeemed, Dice, you're allowed. You're allowed. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> Thank God. Brings us to okay. So, I'm gonna do take you a want picture to go of you in front of Nerebi, or do you want to go after her? I think now I would prefer to go ahead of her. Okay. Um, but if, if I have the option, um, but I'll leave that to your ruling. Well, no, because you 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 rolled higher than you did. So the only reason why is because we didn't put you in the first round, so I skipped you accidentally. So you're technically in front of her. Yeah, if you're okay with me proceeding now, I, I'd like to proceed now. Yeah. Cool. I'm a I'm a waster. Uh, I'm gonna. Oh no, there's this thing right next to me. If I move, it's gonna get an attack of opportunity, right? Maybe. And I'm assuming. Sorry, I'm not exactly sure of the makeup of these obelisks. Do I have the ability to lean and shoot magic around the obelisk? Yeah. Okay. Well then, I'm going to. Well, if I need to protect myself and I want to kill her, I guess I'll just do both. So I will quicken spell okay. and my uh, mage armor to, if memory serves, that should AC becomes 13 plus my dex modifier, which is a plus three, which brings me up to 16, and I could use it. Okay. Uh, so that's 16 up now, and then I don't think I can. Is the cantrip rule still in effect? Where you can. Like, I know I made one of them a bonus action, but I don't know if I still... Can I do two leveled spells, or must I now do a cantrip as an action? You still have to do a cantrip as an action. No problem. I'm going to fire bolter in the face. Okay. Before you do that, I need you to roll a d20. Oh, I shit you not. I just rolled another 20. <sighs> mm. First time, because this dice has a spade instead of a 20. So do you want to know something really and, funny? Uh, it's going to go That's so bad. <laughs> the realm, ones and twenties trigger your wild search. <gasps> On this roll, when you use a leveled spell and I make you make that roll, a one and a 20 affect it. Well, wild's magic, baby. So I shoot. roll your D100 yet again. <laughs> Oh, the DM can't just I, make I him roll at any three. I guess 83. Cast a spell. 80. That's higher than cantrip. Yeah, but he's only done one once, and I can make him do it. I cast mage armor, and then I did firebolt, which is a cantrip. Yeah, but the mage armor did it. The last so, reduced didn't, because yeah. he didn't cast a spell. So 83. So 83. Eh, this is fun. All right, so as you, what is that? as you cast mage armor, the what happens is as you cast it this metallic magical aura start to emanate from you and as it emanates a small tiny pixie poof, pops out beside you and it more pixies <laughs> i knew i'd be back and i'd see you and it is now a summoned creature for you wait really <laughs> You now have a pixie that is beside you. Do they count for this turn or is it for next turn? Well, it, you can, if it, it is now here, um, so it will take its action on the turn. Like its its action is going to be right after yours. Amazing. Oh, I'm going to quickly look up what pixies can do. Uh, but do I, <laughs> does my, um, does my, I still get to shoot my, my firebolt though, you still right? Get to shoot your firebolt, yes. Oh my god, why am I not always a sorcerer? Uh, ranged spell attack, which is a plus five to hit. Here we go. You dice are so welcome now. I'm going to put you in a shadow box. 17 plus five for 22 to hit. Okay. And that's a 1d10 for... Is that a d12 or a d10? This is a d10. Okay. Uh, two. <laughs> uh, and then I get a, 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 do I get, I get a plus five or no? Do I get anything, any bonuses to my damage? No, you don't get any bonuses, unfortunately. Well, two points of fire damage. Her face. Keep you. 
Okay, that ends your turn, which brings us to the Pixie's turn. Uh, <laughs> so her turn is actually going to be 10.5. I'll add her. I guess so, yeah. And I will give you control over her as well, so you can control her until you want to. Thank you very much. Um, but once a day, I can cast... Oh, Okay, team, let's quickly strategize. Once a day, I can have this cast Dispel Magic, Entangle. I can make any one of us fly, or I can mm. polymorph us, or them. I wouldn't Dispel Magic, because then I will shrink. That's not... No, no, I mean, not for you. We would be able to target it uh, if someone else was maybe oh. if someone else is in a bad way under one of those charm spells I could use the pixies once a day to knock that mm. shit off True. I could also try and polymorph her into a monkey for a then we can just go um, phantasmal force entangle fly the rest of the confusion oh my god yeah, that was a that was a good uh, a good roll of the dice. <laughs> I can do so much with this. It's it's their turn now. It's their turn now. Shit. Okay. Uh. Okay. Well, if I am polymorphed, can I still use magic? No. Yeah. To be honest, man, I'm not gonna get a chance to be a dinosaur again. It's a pixie. I mean, pixies have that fey intelligence that they. You could also be a killer so whale. As the yeah, no, I'm gonna pass on that. Feels like a bad idea. No. <laughs> and my my. <laughs> my tummy would get scratched up. So I, as the pixie floats up and looks down with me having just brought them out, uh, Obi gives him a little wink and says, give me something else as old and ancient as me. And he turns him into an Ankylosaurus. Okay. You and an ankylosaurus. Uh, Obi's an Ankylosaurus now. I'm going to wreck some shop. I don't mean to be the devil's advocate, but do you grow bigger than what you are. Yeah, you become an Ankylosaurus. You are currently Eating. between two stones. And, then, and I'm now touching two stones. What happens? <laughs> what happens if I touch the two stones at the same time? That's are it. either of them the right one? How big or am I now dead? The portal's closed currently, so do they do anything at all? Hmm... <laughs> Oh man, I might have just died. Thanks, Ashley. Fun playing with you. Great time. <laughs> no, it's okay. Thanks, Ashley, brilliant. for not letting me be the one to foil Josh's oh, it's, oh, it's awesome and it's I right, know, I and I just. <gasps> I have to roll for it. Like, there's nothing else I can do. Oh, oh that one's cocked. That's on the floor. Okay. <laughs> can I use my luck point to make you roll with disadvantage? <laughs> uh, uh, or advantage, whichever better for you. This? If I cry on camera, will you roll in this? Use my luck point to give Josh advantage on your roll. I'm so dead. I killed Obi. That's all. That's what happens in D and D. Fuck. I killed him. So here's the interesting part. Oh, this is gonna be good. As you touched the one obelisk, you went. You hit one before you hit the other. Just you know how you were growing. The one would have been fine. You broke it, but then you grew to hit the second one. And as you grew to hit the second one, before you had finished your shape, yeah, you would have taken 100 points of damage and you broke the second obelisk. There's now only four obelisks left. So you, it happened. You, and as it like you see this Ankylosaurus take shape, all really you know, excited. The pixie was looking, trying to figure out what's going on. All of a sudden, she gets pushed out of the way. The pixie gets blasted. The dryad behind gets blasted. The dryad behind oh. Obi gets blasted out of the way as these rocks just <laughs> disintegrate. And you see the energy as he takes all 68 points of the Ankylosaurus's health, leaving, what is that, 32, 42? 42? 32. 32 points. How much was your total health point? Not that much. The last thing that Obi thinks is, I'm going to be a dinosaur. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. Um, and then he breaks his hip while transforming. Yeah. As you, as you inevitably bite the bullet. I gotta say, Josh, that is the funniest character death I have seen in a long time. So happy. Oh, so dead. Oh, no. 
sorry. The funny I'm part is that I was so trying grateful. to make Boomer so, so lovable for the moment that when he inevitably dies, you guys will all be soul crushed, and I'm soul crushed over Obi. It's pretty bad. His voice is hilarious. <laughs> so, uh, go mesh with the most okay sorcerer in town. <laughs> As you fully die, you. The, the, the surge of this fey chaos energy blasts out around you. And what happens is you create a uh, essentially an aura tainting the ground around you in a 30 foot radius as your everything, this chaos magic blows out over the ground. There is a wild magic zone. Any spell that gets cast will trigger a wild magic surge from your table as you go poof. So for 30 feet, and I will mark it. I took 30 minutes to figure out a course of action that killed me. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, that's freaking awesome. Maisie is still huge because that was not a concentration. I was gonna ask. I know, thank God. Which brings us to Ruby's turn. Oh my God. It's the pillars. It's the pillars. <laughs> so she doesn't know what's going on and she's going to realize that there's big wolf attacking her. She's going to try to dominate creature. You need to make a wisdom saving throw for me, please. Don't forget to use your creature's... Uh, oh, wait, no, it's your wisdom. Never mind. It's your wisdom. You're a druid. Which is good. And remember, you have that d20. Oh, my luck point. Well, that's... Yeah, she has the luck point. <laughs> Not 20. God. <laughs> 20. Um, because it was a leveled spell. 42. Not now for the wild magic. Suddenly, against all probability, you and your target um, are teleported to unoccupied spaces within 50 feet. Yeah, you just <laughs> gone uh, within 50 feet. So I'm going to go here and we'll go there. Eh, just poof, poof. As you guys are teleported 50 feet apart from each other, give or take. This actually just made my turn so much easier. Um, you also take four D4 points of fall damage as you fall. Okay. So both of you take... Do I fall, though? Because, I mean, so I'm like, huge. That's... Yeah, I'll give you... I'll give you... Reduce for both parties because I'm huge and you have wings. Well, it's fall It's fall damage. So she's technically immune to it. So, um, But I will give you... Um, I will give you... Uh, um, reduced because you are so big. I will be more like I got a thorn in my foot. Right, how do I roll on? Ooh, was loud. So nine points. Oh, okay. So five. Yep. Yep. Five points. <laughs> and she's looking around like, what the heck just happened? And she is going to, because she hasn't moved yet, she's going to move back into the circle. And oh my God. ends her turn, which brings us to Boomer. You're up. Boomer is going to run up to the tree, grab the heart, because it's available, right? It's available. Yep. Boomer's going to grab the heart because he needs five feet to get to the tree, grab the heart, yep. another 15 feet back to the altar, and he's going to drop it on the altar. Okay. And hopefully I can still throw my boomerang. If it was your action. It was your action to drop it and drop it. And then I will use the bonus action dodge. Okay. As you put the heart onto the altar, I need you to make a constitution saving throw for me, please. Oh boy. Oh boy. 11. 11. You feel, as you pick up the heart and you run over and you drop it down, you feel this surge of energy connecting you to the portal. It, nope, but I think I have disadvantage due to exhaustion. Ah. Still a nine. Okay. Or whatever I roll. Okay. 11. So you feel this surge of energy you feel as though the 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 materials required to open a portal surging through you you for all intents and purposes are maintaining concentration on keeping it open and in order to do that because you failed the save you are oh boy you are still taking you are still maintaining concentration but you are taking damage every round you are taking a d12 of damage every round that you hold it that's six points of basically i guess it's psychic damage as, as you 
you just you dropped it and you feel this connection as the heart on the altar blasts through you and then behind you as you are maintaining connection to keep this portal open can i change that i've actually leapt over the altar it, it just doesn't, it doesn't matter it just no no that's fine yeah yeah that's fine. yeah it's still attached to me i'm just putting myself within a five foot range of okay if that bitch yeah it's like it's triggering it's using you as the catalyst uh, and because you're the last one to touch the heart and it's it's going to be surging through you every turn uh which brings us to ortega who is going to he's going to run up to this satyr here and he's going to just plop yeah, he made quick work of that. So the portal is not open yet. The portal is not open yet. It takes a, it oh. takes a full a full round. Oh. And he's gonna. I just put myself right next to her. Oh boy. Yeah. Um. And so his offhand attack. Okay. And it does. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. Brings us to Lark. Awesome. <sighs> okay. Well, shit. Yes. There are four pillars left. Four pillars left. Do I... Now that this, like, energy is kind of happening and we've got boomer in here trying to get the portal open do i have any sense of like any kind of resonance between the table and the pillars that might give me a hint as to which ones are good and which ones are not good um if you use your action if you want to forego your action i will allow you to make a nature check yeah um and yeah for sure and you can you can use that nature check to determine if one of those seems to be resonating more so i'm so bad at nature though i don't know about nature i'm just a stupid little ranger i don't know about nature okay is there a way that i can maybe give boomer like advantage or like you know what maybe what i'll do i love you this is such a great idea <laughs> <laughs> if you touch a pillar Who has expertise in this shit if you touch a pillar a great idea. without knowing what pill you're touching yeah you will give him advantage on maintaining that con save but i'll die if it's the wrong one you will die if it's the wrong one but it's the catch well shoot maybe i'll just like no risk no reward i know this is something that Talos most definitely wouldn't do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I will do a, a ch- I'll do a check to see if I like any of the pillars. And we're thinking nature, not like, I don't know, perception or even like survival or like a better skill than nature. I will allow nature or arcana. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, now, riddle me this. What happens if you have a negative one, but it's a natural 20 on the die? So it's an. I cannot believe this. I li- feel like I've literally check. only rolled 20s and 1s. This is a crazy day for me. What's up? So 19, because I'm glitch. 19, yeah. So 19. You are able to see that the one closest to, well, I guess it's the one, this one here. You're able to see that this one there on the, I guess it's the bottom. Southwest. Yeah, the south, the southwest of the of the uh, stone stone uh, table. The one southwest of the stone table does seem to be resonating, or it's it's kind of like it's um it's blurring a little bit so very so subtly that you wouldn't have noticed without really stopping and really taking a look um you can't see if it's matching energy so your choices are either this is the one that it's connected to right now or this is the one that um is where to go so it's a 50 50 chance yeah okay i'll just vault over the table and go touch it okay so uh that's gonna be on your next turn because okay yeah uh because you foregoed your action but you're able to jump across um do you have a bonus action actually um no no i'm good puppy puppy dog what's big pup what's clifford the big red dog doing right now (laughs) 
Lucy has an idea, but does not know if the DM will allow it. I'm pretty late. Moose. Moosey wants to run here and bite Scary Bat Lady, but instead of just biting, she wants to lock jaw and try to make her touch this one here. Okay. So make so make a a bite, um, and then we'll see from there. We'll see what happens from there. I get to roll my D four with this roll, right? Yeah. Oh, tell me now. Twenty one. So instead of doing damage, you can make a strength check to lock Jaw and to essentially grapple her. I would roll a d20 for this. You would roll a d20 for this. Can I use my luck point? Advantage. All right. Oh, I already have advantage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 19. 19. 19. To contest it. Oh. What is it? 19 plus something? Just I have, I have nothing for strength. Straight 19. I rolled a 20. Mm. And I rolled an 18 for her advantage. <laughs> she has advantage on grapple check. <laughs> so you are able to bite her. And as you bite her, you try to push and push around. But the wings, she, she bats the wings. And as you, boom, knock yourself over. Maisie, you hit the other obelisk. As you hit the other obelisk with your snout, just you take the full amount of the dire wolf's health and the other remaining, whatever the amount it is. <laughs> uh, so like if I didn't have any damage? Yeah. Okay, so then, crap, I lost my team, there we go. I would take 27 points of damage, changing me back to good old Moosey, and then an additional 10 off of Moosey's HP. However much... Yeah, because the Die Wolf has 37. Yes. So, but I only have 27 HP left. So, okay, so you would, yeah, so you take 27 HP from the from the Dire Wolf, which reverts you back. How, how much health do you have? Oh, uh, sorry, is it 100 points of damage? Yeah. I think I misunderstood you. Oh, I'm dead. You're dead? <laughs> How much? I'm dead. Uh, my health was 27. Yeah, so 20. Which is 54, yeah. It's two, yeah. As Maisie <laughs> hits it, the obelisk shatters. <laughs> and the giant dog poof, into nothing. And with a surge of wild magic energy, you realize that the wild magic wasn't just pertaining. Any death with these pillars causes another wild magic surge. <laughs> and the entire area in a 500 foot radius of you, all of the plant life immediately rots and decays. <laughs> as this oh, Moosey can't go out like that. This once beautiful oasis, any plant material, which actually also includes the dryad. <laughs> oh my god. As poor Maisie transforms back into herself as she ultimately perishes, leaving three pillars, one of which is being touched by Lark. It's at this point, it is now Nerebi's turn. She looks at the tiny little thing trying to open the portal. Oh, look at you, brave little frog. Aren't you adorable? She's going to essentially bite you, but it's more like a kiss as she goes to try to give you a, a kiss. And I know she is going to take some poison damage on this, but we'll see. Uh, actually, I think she just uh, she just has to make a DC uh, 13 con save. Okay, 13. DC 12 con save. Uh, yeah, she passed. <laughs> and she's also immune to poisons. <laughs> okay, whoa, Kyle. But I'll have you know, she rolled a nat one on her kiss. As she bends over to give you a kiss and she completely misses it because you're so tiny. And she just, whoa, where did you go? She goes to kiss him and face plants into the, the dais. She, she basically face plants into the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? She did that. She did it so quick. She wasn't even paying attention. You're so little. Let's see how much damage she does to herself. <laughs> yeah, let's say she went down quick and smacked her forehead off the table. Yeah, she does eight points. The ground or whatever. Yeah, she definitely whacked herself pretty hard. And she, 
She looks around and goes, oh, there you are. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you didn't see that. Um, Ortega, are, are we done here with your playing of the games? Like, we should go. Ortega, we should go. And she's going to try to charm Ortega. Let's see if he's able to resist the charm. Yes, okay. He's able to resist the charm. It's probably been because you know, he's so used to it at this point. Which brings us to Boomer. I need you to make your constitution saving throw for me, please. Come on, Boomer. Oh boy. Boomer and con saves are best. I rolled a uh, nine to be to my disadvantage. I rolled the same thing. You rolled an 11. Okay. So you failed the con save, but you still take the full amount of damage. So you take seven more points of psychic damage. Are you still up? I have precisely one hit point left. Oh my god. What are you going to do on your turn? I want to open the portal. Okay. That's all I want to do. So at the end of your turn, which would bring us to Ortega. Oh, you mean I can actually do other things? Oh, you you can. And I'm going to hit her with a boomerang. You're going to hit her. I'm, I, I'll just hit her with my boomerang. Okay. Is Lark close enough? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'd say she's close enough. Does a 16 hit? 16 hit. So four plus two D six. 15 points of damage from this little boomerang. Okay. Yeah, she definitely wasn't expecting to have a boomerang smack her in the face after just face planting from a kiss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> Wait, so this is, this, is the, this is the demon princess trying to kiss the frog and it going real bad for her? Yeah, I guess, yeah, the princess and the frog, yeah. <laughs> real bad. Um, at the end of your turn, the portal starts swirling again. Oh, um, I think he would turn around to Ortega and start jumping up and down on the spot and pointing at the rock that Lark is stuck in. Oh, okay, sure. Or is the portal... Oh, never mind, I see the portal. I scrolled out. I see there's a portal. There's, there's an actual portal, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's okay. It brings us to the top of the round anyways, which at Ortega's turn, he is going to beeline it to the portal. Uh, he's going to go in it, ending yep. his turn. Lark... You touched the pillar. This kind of happened almost at the same point in time. You touched the pillar. You did. As you stick your hand, you feel the reverberating, and oof, you put your hand on it, and you feel the reverberation reverberate through your entire body, but you don't take damage. Not that for me. <laughs> you become part of this portal's catalyst as the, the, the swirling green energy touches that's the that's that's touching boomer triggers to you and then triggers to the obelisk as the portal solidifies ortega is able to give the middle fingers as he pieces out through the portal and as he pieces out through the portal the obelisk that you were not touching the shatter and Nerebi looks at both of you and she goes what have you done this cannot be this cannot do you insignificant worms you are nothing more than a delay in my master plan rumor starts hugging Lark's leg today is the day that you will join as soon as your hand lets go of that obelisk, you will die, both of you. Or take my hand and we can leave here safe and sound. Boomer is going to reach out his hand to her. And as soon as she takes it, he's going to smack her in the face with his boomerang. <laughs> what is Lark going to do? Okay. So you, you well, both of you die either like whatever, like if you don't take her, you die. And I did just roll a natural one on my inside. True. Again, only not 20s and net ones today. That's it. That's all I can do. Yeah, I'm like, well. Are you not rolling a D2? <laughs> I'm just flipping a coin. Um, I, was I think. About to say, that's Lark, called flipping a coin. <laughs> I think Lark is going to kind of look around, see this beautiful fey creature that is has have been totally desecrated at this point and like the remains of all of these people and think man that village is totally gone and man i don't even i don't even go here i'm just here i'm hanging out right and i think she's gonna think about what her options are and i think she's going to extend a genuine hand to 
She remember that hits her in the face with this boom right before. He okay. Died. Oh my god. Actually, he probably can't reach that high, so he probably hits you in the knee. So. Ow. Hits <laughs> hits Lark or hits Nerubi. Oh, I only oh, I don't have extra attack. I can only pick one. I can only pick one. Uh, uh, I do need to be, uh, who has more hit points. Uh, he sees you take a genuine hand and he probably goes, she's gonna need help escaping. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's, he's, he's gonna hit the ruby and then he make, with his boomerang. Make an attack roll. 23 to hit. That'll hit. Oh. Lark is still technically an ally within five feet. Technically, yeah, technically. Excellent. Not as good this time, only nine points of damage. Okay. As she... Oh, you little bugger. <sighs> Very well, have it your way. Ta-ta, come darling. We're going to rule the fate together. And poof, she teleports away. And as she teleports away, the obelisk, poof, the portal closes. And poor Boomer, the last one in this rotted field of decay and magic, poof, as he blows up, causing the wild magic surge once more as the entire area gets torn asunder. This way gate gets destroyed entirely, never able to return. The only thing remaining is a single blood rose at the foot of the crater that is left behind. Ortega did notice this as it happened. And as Ortega blasts back through the portal, <laughs> memories change and shift, and he falls poof, out onto the material plane. He looks around and he sees a town. Unlike anything he's seen in the Fae, stranger to this world, looks around and doesn't even know where to begin. He sees people heading north, he sees people heading south out of the town, and so he just starts to wander. And as he starts to wander, his, wind, his mind wanders back into that room that he and Tatiana have shared. And he finishes by saying, I think if she were to find me, or if I were to come back to her, I don't think she'd be so nice next time. And that's where we're going to end it tonight. And that wraps up this chapter of the Banded Broken's history. As they sit back in the quiet stillness of their room at the inn, it's clear how those pivotal moments have shaped their current journey and the bonds that they share. Big thanks to MAB Music for providing the perfect atmosphere throughout our story, and a heartfelt thank you to all our listeners for joining us on this adventure. We look forward to continuing this journey with you, so stay tuned for more exciting chapters and new revelations. And until then, I am your host and Dungeon Master Kyle, and may your own tales be filled with as much intrigue and excitement as ours.